96% of Americans believe that the US will witness more Baltimore-style riots this summer. The elite know that these riots are coming because to a large extent, their policies have created the environment for them. Wealth inequality, which is proven to cause social unrest, is at its worst since before World War II. But wealth inequality isn't caused by a failure of capitalism, it's caused by catastrophic Keynesian central bank policies that have instituted endless money printing and worldwide inflation. And it's not just America, it's the world. The gap between the rich and the poor has widened everywhere. This huge disparity is not because of some flaw in capitalism. The problem is central banks that are out of control, printing money like no one ever imagined, and have created a massive worldwide financial inflation. But by blaming capitalism, leftists who warn about wealth inequality are playing right into the elite's hands. Because their solution is going to be more power in the hands of the state and central banks. The very same policies which caused the problem in the first place. Wealth inequality is being exacerbated by a drop in real wages. As real wages drop, it will become increasingly harder to pacify younger generations via consumer culture. With religion, family and social mobility all declining in influence, lifestyles built around the acquisition of products will become harder to maintain as the economic environment worsens, prompting further disenfranchisement amongst young people. This effect is amplified by the global political awakening acknowledged by elitists like Zbigniew Brzezinski, a political renaissance that has been driven by the increasingly widespread availability of information thanks to the internet. I'm deeply troubled that a very vague, emotionally stated, semi-theologically defined diagnosis of the central global menace is obscuring our national ability to comprehend the historically unprecedented challenge which is being posed in our time by a massive global political awakening and thus is obstructing our ability to deal effectively with the global political turmoil that this awakening is generating. This awakening has in turn led to more distrust in government and leadership in the United States and other Western countries, another precondition for civil unrest. The toxic cocktail of increased corruption, social alienation and lack of community, all contributory factors to the 2011 London riots, will heighten the risk of domestic disorder. In an effort to derail this organic global political awakening, Elitists like George Soros, who predicted class war and riots over three years ago, are bankrolling what on the surface appear to be grassroots uprisings in an effort to steer and divert their impact. This is why Black Lives Matter, funded to the tune of $33 million by Soros, has increasingly become about toxic racial division instead of addressing the causes of police brutality. An uprising that could have been centred on reducing state power has instead been hijacked from below by criminal opportunists and from above by the elite itself. Now that this uprising has been subverted, the elite will use the fallout, violent riots and looting in major cities across America to enlist support from average Americans for an increase in state power and in the aftermath of the next financial collapse, economic totalitarianism, government-controlled bank accounts, and a move towards banning cash altogether. It's the age-old problem-reaction-solution method at play once again. As Brendan Smith explains, the international banking cult has no interest whatsoever in saving the current system, despite the assumptions of many market analysts. Their only goal has been to stave off the visible effects of the crisis until a new system is ready, psychologically justified in the public consciousness, to be put 
into place. This new system will be characterised by more authoritarianism, a bigger police state and less economic freedom. And we know that the elite are expecting this crisis because they've made very clear preparations to deal with the fallout. The New York Times reported that the wealthy are installing expensive, bulletproof safe rooms in their luxury apartments and homes to protect against increased criminality, looting and physical threats to their safety. Economist Robert Johnson also revealed that elitists at the Davos Economic Forum told him they were buying remote hideaways in places like New Zealand to escape potential Ferguson-style uprisings on a bigger scale. A lot of very wealthy and powerful people are quite afraid right now. They see us on an unstable trajectory. They don't see our political institutions being what you might call representative, responsive, and pulling things together. But as the system doesn't have proper resources, as it doesn't represent people, things are getting more and more dangerous as, say, Ferguson, Missouri brings to bear. When asked, Realtors selling this property said their wealthy clients were making these purchases because they were, quote, paranoid about, quote, what is happening around them. Urban unrest experts like Dr. Max Herman say that the United States is on the cusp of a new cycle of civil unrest. Economist Martin Armstrong predicts that a, quote, serious political uprising will erupt by 2016 in the United States. I wouldn't go that far but it's virtually guaranteed that we will see more widespread domestic disorder over the next two years if we continue to follow these disastrous Keynesian economic policies and allow populist social justice movements to be hijacked and subverted by the powers that be. The elite are busy making preparations for the outcome of this next phase of the crisis. The question is, are you?